right, so welcome everyone. Um, excited to have some folks with us here on a Saturday morning. Thank you for um, taking time. I'm, I'm glad that people are excited about the Joyful World Mural Park and want to get more information. Um, I'm going to share my screen so I can do intros. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, today we have myself. Um, my name is Trisha Hearing. I am with Forecast Public Art. I'm an independent consultant with Forecast. Um, we have Dudley, who is with Arts Affair, and Hibak and Danielle, who are previous muralists um, from the State Fair Mural Park. Um, everyone is going to have a chance to chat with you and share some thoughts behind the park, as well as answer questions. And then we also have Boo, who's kind of working on our um, our back end to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, thank you everyone who kind of was bearing with the technical difficulties we had in the um, beginning. And I'm sorry that we're not able to see you, um, but please do participate in the chat um, and add comments and we'll make sure to revisit any questions that come up uh, towards the end. So um, we're gonna start with um, an overview of the mural part, give you a little bit of background. Um, I really would love this session just to stay an hour uh, because it is a Saturday and I, I want everyone to be able to get back to their weekend. Um, we'll stay a little bit over if needed. If there's a lot of questions, we want to make sure you feel informed about this opportunity. Um, but yeah, just a bit of background to the mural park. Um, the mural park is actually an official state fair attraction. So this is the third year. It was started in um, 2021. Um, it is funded by the State Fair and the State Fair Foundation, so there are no other sponsors or, or vendors on this park. Um, Forecast Public Art is a public art organization, a nonprofit organization in St. Paul, Minnesota, that um, has been contracted by the State Fair to organize the park and contract the artists. So initially, Forecast was brought on to design and conceptualize and launch the park with the State Fair. Um, myself, Trisha, I'm an independent consultant, as I said, with Forecast Public Art, and I work on the artist commissioning process and the design of the park. I'm involved all the way through, so if you end up um, being contracted to be part of the park, um, I'm one of your main contacts um, for, the, for, the, for the park. And then we have Dudley, who is a key contact in the State Fair Entertainment Department. Um, she runs a long running um, theater dance program called Arts Affair and other state fair arts partnerships. She was a big advocate for the mural park, helped make it happen, um, and is also your main fair on site contact. So uh, day of, she knows the fair inside and out, and she's going to share a little bit more about that later on as well. So um, the Joyful World Mural Park is kind of called Joyful World based on a prompt that we came up with in 2021. As you know, this was just, you know, we were still in pandemic times and we were thinking about what people needed, um, especially in the state fair environment, which, you know, everyone was kind of getting back into public space and moving around with each other. And so we thought of this mural park as being a place that people could sort of dream, feel good, feel happy, um, reflect a lot of the values of the state fair, but be a sort of oasis from all of the, you know, activity that happens at the fair. Um, and the ideas behind it is that there's always a new, there are always new muralists contributing to the park every year. So other murals from previous years are part of the park, and then there's artists painting live um, during the fair each year. Those murals remain part of the state fair mural park, and they are owned by the state fair. They display them also in the summertime on the fairgrounds um, and then bring them back to the mural park location. Um, each artist is commissioned to paint an eight by eight foot side of a triangle structure. Um, and the artist is paid uh, $4,500. That is a fee that we've continued to actually change over the years based on learning from the previous artists, like what it takes to really make this happen. Um, the fee includes materials, and then the artists are also pay provided with parking, fair access, and food vouchers. Um, you can also hire an assistant as part of your fee, so that's kind of up to you, like how you spend that, that uh, stipend. Uh, we really do encourage artists from outside the metro area and greater Minnesota to apply, and if you have any other needs um, to participate in the fair, other costs like hotel stays or things like that, because um, your are travel time is far, we would discuss um, additional funds if needed. 
Um, and this year we are selecting four new muralists for the um, State Fair Mural Park. So this is the structure, just to give you an idea of that eight by eight um, side or each side. And um, there initially were two artists on each structure. And this year we're adding, there will be a third artist on some of the structures. So um, two sides will already be painted and artists this year will be painting the third side of the structure. Uh, some images of in process from the first year, just to get a bit of an idea of what, what it looks like to be on site painting a lot of crowd interaction um, during the fair. So, so I'm gonna have uh, Dudley speak a little bit to the artist experience. Uh, what is it like to paint at the state fair? Some things to know about um, this opportunity and just, um, it's very unique. It's not like being in the um, fine arts building or a lot of the other arts experiences on um, the fairgrounds. So I'll pass it over to Dudley. Thank you so much, Trisha. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> got, got that morning throat. Um, feel free also to pop questions in the chat if there's anything you want me to address specifically. A little background. Um, I know some of you on here are probably fair diehards as I was before um, I started working for the fair. And some of you may may have never been or only go occasionally. Um, and we, we welcome all of you. You don't have to love the fair to <laughs> be a muralist, although you should love being there as a muralist. Um, you probably know the Minnesota State Fair is one of the largest events um, in the upper Midwest, and some people say for entertainment purposes, really, um, in the United States, it's a 2 million people attend in 12 days. That's an average number. Um, I think the record was set in 2019, and that was 2.1 million. But even last year, um, sort of still recovering from pandemic attendance issues and you know people's comfort level we we're still 1.8 million people um the fairgrounds is 320 acres and and there's everything there right the joyful world mural park will be in the same location it was last year which is this quiet tree line shaded block right there sort of what i would consider in front of the grandstand um which is a major pass through point you sort of can't get from one end to the other without going by the corn roast um, or the grandstand or sweet martha's there to the west of the grandstand and um as you can imagine putting on a 12-day event that serves an average of 200,000 people a day requires a lot of logistics and a lot of staff and i think it's important to know that we are one small cog in the wheel and we benefit from all the infrastructure that's in place. Um, and the key is sort of learning what it is and how to access it. The fairgrounds are open to the public year round. And so you could go in there at any point and just check it out. This map is available on the website. The kickoff to summer, uh, which is Memorial Weekend, will be when last the last two years murals will be placed around the fairgrounds and there will be um, a guide to find them if you want to see what we've done in the past get a sense of those triangle structures um, you know I don't think that seeing the work uh, is indicative of what we might choose this year only to give you context for what is already out there and those murals will be on the grounds and then relocated to the mural park as we shift into fair mode. <clears throat> and so the timeline and the process of being involved in the fair is really to maximize all of those opportunities to sort of experience the fairgrounds and then also have us prep and be ready for you. Um, the fairgrounds usually shuts down the first Monday in August and we go from um, it's not quite a hundred full-time staff that work year round. I'm not a full-time staff um, to 10,000. I think it's two, I should know these numbers better. I think it's 2000 people who work for the fair proper. And then we don't keep track of all the people who work for all of the vendors. So tens of thousands of people 
um, show up and sort of build the world that is the fair that runs from August 24th to September 4th. Um, you will, when selected, uh, you will get a lot of information from um, my cohort, uh, Shannon Bukta, who works in the entertainment department, the Joyful World, Mural Park, and all the things that I run actually are housed in the entertainment department. It's one of uh, 750 usually free events, um, you know, from the Liney Lodge and the Baldwin Park um, to the dog show and the log rolling and, you know, the West End, Schilling Amphitheater, all that stuff all goes through a very small staff of full time of five and then a, a handful of us that work seasonally. And so getting um, getting information back to us allows us to help you be ready um, to bring your stuff in, um, access storage and really um, paint with what you need and have uh, the support um, that that you deserve. So I know that's a pretty general um, overview of it. I think that when we get into uh, Danielle and Hibak's experience, you'll hear more from them um, about sort of what they what it was like and and you know the sort of things they asked for and got or or we couldn't get. Um, but it's uh, it's kind of you you might end up getting a lot of support from people you never see, and that's just the magic of the infrastructure of of how the fair works. Um, so communication, um, or you know, asking us questions and giving us information. We're really proud to bring this program back. It's not it's not going to go anywhere. It it it's visionary. I think to have public art represented at the fair. The first public art piece was actually um, the giant sing-along, which is sometimes known as the giant karaoke, um, which was a, a commission with Northern Lights, um, I think close to 15 years ago. Um, I staffed that as well. And I think there's a deep understanding and appreciation for the, the role the arts play in our community, in our state, and therefore on the fairgrounds where our mission is really to showcase everything that makes Minnesota great and to make sure that the whole state and the whole community sees themselves reflected back um, in those artisan opportunities. Thanks Did I that. miss anything, Tricia, that you wanted me to talk about? No, that's great. Um, I think that uh, it's really good for people to know just kind of how how it fits into the bigger scheme of things and um, how artists are supported. You, Like Dudley said, you do have a lot of support. You're not just like thrown into the fair to paint. This has a whole support structure around it. Um, what's really exciting, I mean, for me, especially working on this, uh, I used to go to the fair just as a attendee and um, working on the mural park, I got to actually sort of be part of the fair. And that's a really exciting experience because you get to go in early, um, as everyone's setting up and, you know, you have back access into the fair. And so there's just like this sort of different um, perspective that you get to see on how the state fair comes together and, and the way that people are um, making it happen. So it's super fun. Um, all right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the application. Um, I do hope that, you know, if questions are coming up for you. Like we said, please put them in the chat and we'll track them. Um, but to go through the important part of, of how to apply um, I hope that you have further questions about this. We tried to make the application as accessible and easy as possible. Um, we don't want it to be super extensive. So that's why it is pretty brief, but I think that you can still craft a pretty strong application based on uh, what uh, the requirements are. So um, the application is due on June 5th at 8 p.m. We don't accept any applications after that time. Um, I highly recommend that you start your application earlier. Don't wait till the last minute because a lot of times what happens with digital applications is you're trying to put something in and then your computer crashes at the last minute or you know anything could happen. It's You shouldn't have any tech issues with the Google form, but you also do need a Gmail address. So you have to kind of figure out just like how you're gonna get your application in. Make sure you start it a little bit earlier. Um, so there's a couple questions. The first one is who are you as an artist and why would you like to paint at the fair? So this is an open-ended question where you're able to talk about just your background as an artist, anything about your identity, anything about your um, subject matter, whatever you wanna share. It's sort of like your artist statement, but we do want you to talk about why you're applying to this, to this opportunity. Um, 
a brief description of your joyful world mural concept. So what is it that you want to paint and how does it fit into um, this mural park? And then there's a rough design sketch for the mural that reflects the theme. So how does it depict the world you want to live in and what does a joyful world mean to you? Um, I will say that this is something that we went back and forth about because we really don't often at forecast particularly, we don't like to ask artists to do work without paying them for that work. So know that this sketch is not meant to be a finished design. We're not asking you to provide a full design plan um, that takes too much time on your part. If you are an artist that works that way and thinks that way and you want to have your sketch be very finished, um, you are more than welcome to, to provide a very thorough sketch. But we're not looking at someone who provides a thorough sketch and someone who provides a loose sketch and having any bias towards the more finished sketch. So really what we wanna know is just that you have an idea of how you can use that eight by eight area because that's a really specific dimensionality. Um, there's scale. So we're just like, how does this artist think about um, this specific eight by eight space for a mural? We're really looking at your work samples. So two to four samples of previously executed murals or large scale paintings. So that is where that we can see like what your ability is, what your style is. So you don't need to put a lot of effort into the sketch. It's really about how are you using that surface area and do you have a concept? Because actually from the time you're selected to the time you have to do the fair, it's a very short timeline. And so we wanna make sure that you're ready to go. Um, in terms of the requirement of previously executed murals or large scale paintings, unfortunately, because of the nature of this park, um, needing to paint live, the, the scale of the, the surface, we can't um, offer the opportunity to artists who haven't painted large before. Um, it, it takes a lot to scale up your work. You know, if you've always been working on small canvases and then you're gonna work on an eight by eight surface. And then there's things like weather, uh, it rain, <laughs> lots of crowds, heat. There's all of these different elements. It's just, it's not really the best opportunity to experiment with scaling up your work. So um, it's important that you had some experience, even if it's an interior mural, just a super large painting, but something that you can show um, that demonstrates your ability to execute um, the commission in these conditions. So those are the only requirements, pretty straightforward, hopefully pretty simple. Um, we did it the same way last year and we, we were able to get, we got a lot of applications and, and many strong applications. So. Um, going off of this process, um, uh, we know that artists are able to pull, pull something out for us. In terms of how are you being selected, um, when we worked with the State Fair, they, they basically said that they wanted to align the Joyful World Mural Park with the way that the State Fair thinks about everything else that they bring into the State Fair. So going off of the values of the State Fair, the things that they strive to promote, um, we're looking for artists um, and artworks that um, parallel those, those same ideas. Um, and in addition, we're also making sure that it fits into the park. Um, it, it's going to be up to audience enjoyment. There's something unique about it, um, something we haven't seen before. Um, there's definitely a, a representation of different genres, cultures, and geography. Um, relevance to the theme, obviously. And then um, is this artist able to complete this commission? Like, is their application showing that they have a plan? Do they have the previous experience? Um, is it something where they're going to be capable of doing um, that? And as you can see, we don't ask for a resume or a CV or a list of other experiences. So really it is through the way that you write your application um, and the things that you submit that give us a sense of your confidence to complete um, the commission. Okay, so that's a general overview of the application. Um, I hope that, like I said, we're trying to get through the presentation part quickly so we can just do uh, questions and dive deeper into the application. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Hibak to give us an artist testimonial about her experience um, at the first mural park. Morning, y'all. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Hibak Ibrahim. I'm a muralist in Minneapolis. I do mainly um, murals in restaurants and coffee shops and things like that. So a commercial artist. Uh, but I was part of the first year um, Joyful World Mural Park. Um, and I, I loved it personally. Um, it was my 
it was my first project um, once I had done started doing art full time. If y'all hear the train in the background, sorry about that. Um, there's a very loud train by my studio. Um, but I thought the experience is really fun, um, especially if you love interacting with folks in the park. Um, people will walk by, kids especially, will ask a lot about what you're doing. And it's a really cool opportunity to get to talk about art and talk about your art and just connect with people. Um, as an artist, sometimes I think you all know um, it can be lonely sometimes where you're just working at your studio. Um, you don't always get opportunity to do public things and interact with people. Um, so it's just a really cool opportunity to connect with folks and, and meet people and sometimes make connections that will benefit you later in your art career. Like um, you might meet some people who see your work and love it and want to see it somewhere else and will commission you. Um, not that that's necessarily the point, but that's always a good benefit of talking to people. Um, some of the things that um, I think might have been more difficult, just the weather. Um, you just have to be prepared if you um, don't do well with heat. I mean, we do have tents that um, cover it, but uh, just coming in those times of day that aren't the hottest, uh, things like that. Um, and it's a really cool experience to get to showcase your voice because there's not a lot of parameter series, you know, what does joy mean to you? And so um, in mine, there's just a bunch of things that I love. This one's mainly about my childhood games I used to play, like that red piece with the rainbow is a sorry. Um, I loved that game as a kid. Um, cats. I love cats. And so it's just like, you know, it doesn't have to be that serious if you're not a serious artist, which I'm, I don't consider myself that serious in art. I just kind of like fun things that make me happy. So this is like a perfect experience to not um, be as heavy because um, I feel like there's the last couple of years have been kind of heavy. So this is a, a nice reprieve from that. Um, yeah. Trisha, is there anything else you kind of want me to touch on? Um, no, I think, I think that's great. You, you participated in the first year and the first year we had 12 muralists. Was it 12 or 10? 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot. And we really experimented with that. We wanted to kick off the park. Um, the second year we only had four. So it was a different, um, uh, sort of cohort of artists, but we learned a lot from both of those years. And so the park continues to be influenced by the artists that participated in it, which is also why we wanted to have some artists as part of this session. Um, Hibok, was there like any just one experience that you remember or like a memory from your when it happened or when you did the park that was like, oh, I remember this one moment that was super fun or? Yeah, I mean, I think there was even in the slide, there's a picture and there's a couple of kids. Um, I kept getting kids. I, I was a youth worker for a long time. So I feel like I just attract young people. Um, but I had a, a like a group of girls who were all friends who came and they thought it was the coolest thing that I was painting these pink stairs. Um, they were obsessed with them. And so I got to talk to them about what it's like to be an artist. And they they didn't know that you could be an artist as a career. So that was really special to me to get to open these kids' eyes to, you know, something that they could do in their future. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think that's something also that's important to speak to is that like, you do have, you do engage with the public. I mean, there's definitely an element where some of the artists would put on headphones and just sort of like zone out. And I, it's important to do that as an artist as well. Um, and so you can kind of take breaks from engaging with the public, but it really um, is a really great opportunity if you wanna talk to people and you wanna be in a high, high paced environment. Artists that really love studio practice and aren't really public facing, it, it's a little bit harder. Um, and so we do think it's important just to acknowledge that about this opportunity. Um, all right, awesome. Thanks, Hibak. We will um, switch over to Danielle and have her share a bit about her experience in the second year. And I will also say that the first year we curated the park. Um, and so Hibak was selected by the committee to do a mural. The second year was when we launched the open call. And so Danielle was actually an artist who applied the same way that anyone participating today would apply. So she's gonna speak a little bit more to that process as well. Yeah, so I really enjoyed this. This was an incredibly unique experience. Um, I don't think like having done other murals and other mural work from everywhere from like a chalkboard mural in a coffee shop or a business to doing like a little girl's bedroom to doing really large scale murals. Um, this is a totally unique experience getting to interact with the number of people that you get, get to interact with. 
Um, it's really cool. The application process, I personally fully fleshed out my mural idea and I spent a good, probably a good 20 hours working on that and working on like other ideas and options, but that's how I work. That's definitely not what you have to do. Um, one of the muralists last year, um, Suyao, had a very, very loose sketch. Um, and she did hers from that loose sketch from absolutely nothing on her board. Um, whereas myself and the other two artists came in and actually sketched ours out with a projector um, the day before. And I spent probably, well, I don't know, like four hours sketching it the day before the fair started. Um, let's see, you wanted me to speak to the application some more? Yeah, I guess just like, how did you, how did you come up with what it was that you were going to submit? I mean, if you were selected. And so how did you come up with the idea for the fair? Like, as you looked at the application, how, how did you know what to submit? Yeah. So I like to work with typography and illustration. I like to put the two things together. So I tried to think of things that would speak to uh, the people walking by at the state fair. Like what are things that as a Minnesotan, I could think of that make me um, feel joy and that would maybe speak to other people. So I tried to think of something um, just a bunch of different things, and I put them into a word that um, made me feel joy, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I fully fleshed out my idea, but you don't have to do that. The I also tried to think of other words. So because I was doing typography and illustration, I I went through a series of a bunch of other words and other options. Um, I had a Minneapolis one at one point and I had a Minnesota one. So a bunch of different options. Um, and I just tried to think about like what, not just what brings me joy, but also what might um, speak to other people walking by. Um, can you speak a little bit just to your, your experience on the fairgrounds and what it was like kind of day to day bringing your, you know, you, you had your stuff there, but like coming into the fair and, and painting and, and just kind of what it felt like for you. Yeah. So, um, coming into the fair every day was, it's weird. It's weird. Cause you get to drive in the back and like park in the really nice parking, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> And I was there every day of the fair, except for the last one. I was painting every day, except for the last two days. Um, and just the walk, like coming in, most of your painting supplies, you drop off ahead of time, which is nice. But yeah, being ready for the weather. So I brought like sweatshirt and I had sunscreen and a hat and all of those things. And we did have tents and things like that, but the tent isn't quite as tall as your mural is. So if you were working near the top of your mural, um, the tent was gonna be in your way. So I didn't end up actually using that very much, um, but like bringing in snacks and making sure to take frequent breaks and having water and things like that. I know one of the muralists last year overdid it one of the days and had to not be there the second day that she was meaning to be painting because it was too, like she just painted for too long. So taking yeah. lots of breaks and it's, I mean, it's hot or it's cold, but most of the time it was really hot. Yeah. Um, and just being prepared for, for that. I ended up with a sunburn like one of the days and um, thankfully didn't blister, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it just depended on, depending on what you were doing. And then I had a, a few people come and help me. I had, I think one, two, three three different people come and help me on different days just for short periods of time, which was really nice to have somebody else to kind of um, continue working while you were talking to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, da Danielle. I think it's also, Danielle just spoke to um, the different conditions at the fair. So that is something to know about this opportunity. And if you're considering applying, 
that it does um, take a lot of flexibility. Um, there may be days where it's rained out. So you were planning on painting that day and you can't because rain, um, you may be tired and decide not to paint that day. Um, you, it is up to the artist how many days they paint. We, we have like a minimum, but we do kind of let you come and go as you, as you wish. You could paint every single day of the fair if you wanted to. Um, but it, it is very labor intensive. And so that's something that we put on the frequently asked questions and other materials just to like understand that this um, takes a lot to do. It's a great opportunity, it's paid well, but it definitely um, requires you to, to kind of know what, what that's going to mean for you. We do build in things like easy access to the site, um, the ability to bring in people um, to have a little team with you so that you're not on your own all the time. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of flexibility with it to make it a very comfortable experience, but just to note that it, it is, it is a labor intensive experience. Um, Trisha, I, I'm going to talk a little bit. There's a lot of kind of, um, on-site questions. And so Habak and Danielle, feel free to chime in too. And then I think we should, uh, there's a, a lot of questions about sort of the application itself that maybe we should save a little time for, um, I think for all of your on-site questions, they're great. And the fair is a unique site. And so if I could address them generally, the, the, the you have a great deal of flexibility. We wanna offer you as much support as possible. So the more that you tell us, the more we can plan. And that is everything from you know materials and supplies to also human support. Um, I run several programs. Joyful World is one of them. If I know that you're going to be there at a certain time with a certain need, I'm going to make sure I'm there. Um, if you are a person like you'll see in this image, you'll see Wes Winship. Um, Wes really liked to paint at night, loves the fair, felt comfortable um, by himself, had a group of friends. And we just mostly texted um, so I knew when he was leaving you know, um, he didn't need a lot of support. Um, and and so I think just generally, the more you know what you need, the more we can arrange it for you. And the more maybe you swing towards just wanting a lot of independence and flexibility to, you know, do it when you feel like it or, or you know, how your life arranges itself, then the less I'll be able to get ahead of supporting you, but that's okay. We don't feel prescriptive about that. Um, some folks are really used to just hauling everything in and making it work and other people um, need, need more. So I think knowing yourself and what you need is really key. Um, and then Trisha, you should leave it on this slide because there, there's uh, in the chat, you'll see some folks actually asking about samples. And I think you know, Wes's loon is a great example of a concept that was pretty fully fleshed out in a previous Yeah, iteration. sure. So um, this is the last section is just to go to questions. And I can't see, I can't look at the uh, questions while I'm presenting. I can't open the chat. So I'm wondering if, Boo, you've been tracking them or you can like kind of read some questions. I don't, have, have you been responding to any, uh, Dudley or? Yeah, yeah. They've been, yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Boo. Um, I mean, I think there are a lot of questions about um, images and sort of, you know, like what does that application look like? How much do I write? If mm -hmm. I have a sketch uh, or a sample of something that's very similar to what I want to do, and, um, you know, uh, if I applied before, should I change my application? Just some of yeah. those. Those are the main ones. So, does, uh, do you want to just like go down the list? I can respond to them. Boo, if you yeah. want to read them or. All right, let's start with the beginning. The first question was um, wondering how the triangle will be split between four. Does this mean artists will work together on a side to come up with the concept together? Or how does this split between the three sides of work? Okay, so each artist has their own side. Um, so the you, you don't collaborate with another artist unless you apply as a team. Um, and you can, again, you can apply as a duo, um, you could apply as three artists, but you don't get a larger stipend. So that stipend has to be split between the artists. Um, the, there are three sides to a triangle structure. So an artist is assigned to each side. Um, what I meant by this year is there's gonna be three is that um, last year we had here um, an artist on one side and the other, and the third side hadn't been painted yet. 
So the third side of a lot of the structures is, are going to be painted this year. Um, so you won't necessarily have the dynamic of two artists right next to each other. Each one will kind of be on their own structure that if that helps. So yes, um, each artist or artist applicant is given a full eight by eight area um, for, for themselves. Okay, and the next question is, is it strictly painting or can you incorporate a form of mixed media along with the painting? Sure, so you can um, incorporate mixed media. I would say like if you maybe were gonna do mosaic or you were going to do something like that, um, you could. You just have to keep in mind that it's an exterior mural. Um, it, it lives outside on the fairgrounds. They do store them in the winter inside, but it needs to be mixed media that works outdoors and is sealed and will last in that way. Like I, I definitely, we're not looking for something that incorporates textiles or, you know, very delicate beadwork or things like that because they're moved by forklift. They're very heavy, they have sandbags inside. Um, so they're not handled delicately. Uh, most of the artists finish their murals and then they get um, coated with a, a latex like protective coating, um, but that's pretty much it. So mixed media is cool. I would love to see someone do a collage piece or something like that, but it would need to be like sealed in very well so that it would withstand um, several years of being outside. Uh, this is a question about an appropriate work sample. Um, Mia says, I do large scale street art where I paint on the sidewalk and that's done in two days typically and is usually done live in street art fairs. Would this be accept acceptable for a large scale work example? Uh, for a sample? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, is there a maximum or minimum for the word count when writing the portion of the application? Um, there's not really a minimum or a maximum, but I would say we get on average about 50 applications, 40, 50 applications. At least we did last year. It could be more this year. So thinking about the panelists, um, you want to be clear and concise um, when they are reading through a lot of applications. If yours is going on for eight paragraphs, um, they'll probably start skimming at a certain point. Um, so I think it would work in your benefit to write one to two max paragraphs to each question. Um, the more clear and concise you can be, the better. Um, I, I don't think the questions are asking too much that you need to go that, that deep, um, but I would definitely recommend no more than two paragraphs, but I don't think you even, you could do a paragraph per, per question. Uh, wondering about uh, the sealant, um, how do they seal, how do previous painters seal their artwork and what type of exterior paint is this? So um, some artists use spray paint, some artists use mural paint, um, a mural brand paint. Uh, Bach, did you use spray paint or did you use acrylic? You used house paint. I think both of you used Yeah, I use bare paint exterior. So just make sure whatever you're using is for outside, like no interior paints. Yeah, I used Sherwin-Williams exterior, but I've done bare paint exterior before. Um, so, uh, and, then, and then I use paint? Posca paint markers too. Paint markers. Uh, mm -hmm. Wes used spray paint. Um, I think that uh, Noah was just using acrylic uh, mural paint. All of the murals are sealed by the State Fair team. So they use um, a polyurethane coating um, on the murals afterwards. So you actually don't have to seal your mural unless you really want to seal your own, own mural and you have an extra day, you're, you're welcome to do it yourself as well. Um, if not, the, the team will uh, seal the murals. And Noah, um, they, they finished early. And so there was a lot of time where the work was finished and still out on the fairgrounds. So Noah chose to, to they, that team sealed theirs mid fair so that it was protected. But if you're painting through most of the fair, then yours will get sealed by um, our crew afterwards. Uh, we have a question that asks, can you come at different times during the day or are you require there to be the full day? You can come at different times during the day. So once the muralists are selected, we do artist orientation. We have the artists meet um, and we encourage the artists to be there on the first day all together of the fair, like get going on the first day. It is really more fun when the artists are there together. You're just kind of not alone. <laughs> so you have a little bit of a community with you. 
Um, so we try to have the artists coordinate their days as much as possible. Um, we would love for artists to paint at least four days, four to five days um, to be there. You can be there as long as you want, um, 12 days of the fair. Uh, we're not, I mean, it's not great if you're like done in a day and a half. So that's, what, you know, cause then the mural is just like quickly done. So if you're there at least four days and you only paint for four hours each of those days, that's fine. We also have the, um, this kind of spread out because the weather is completely unpredictable. So the first half of the fair could get completely rained out. And then you have to be flexible to be able to paint the second half of the fair. So that's why it's important when you apply to say, I am available for all, you know, 12 days of the fair. Um, and then work your schedule from there. Um, the state fair team that Dudley puts together is usually there only certain number of hours during the day. And I don't think they're there in the evening. So you can paint in the evening. Wes, one of the painters from last year loved painting at the, in the evening because he liked the fair at night. Um, you could also have an assistant with you or a team with you and your team really likes to be there at night. And so you, you, you can be there. Um, it is nearby the grandstand. So, you know, there's like a lot of that traffic at night. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you. It's nice to paint during the time when the, the team is there because they can help you with like loading your stuff into the storage, move, you know, you can see on here, there's like sort of little stanchions around. They pull those out, put them away. We put signage up that says mural in progress. So if you're there during the time the state fair team is there, you also have just kind of that support um, with them and with Dudley on site. Um, is there anything else you want to add to that, Dudley? Yeah, I mean, I think also keep in mind that um, there is a quite a bit of ambient light all over the fairgrounds, but that there is not specific lighting for the mural park. So if you are painting in the evening, you have to work with the ambient light that's there. Um, we haven't ever had anyone ask to bring lighting in and, and, and I would have to run that up the chain just because of the trip hazard and make sure that that fair staff felt like either we could cable ramp it or you know, do it in a way that was safe. So um, I think that is an important thing to think about when you think about time. Next question is wondering if folks can apply again, and if so, do they need to have a different idea in their application? Um, we encourage people to apply again. So if you applied last year, um, please do apply again this year. Um, absolutely, you can apply as many times as you want. Artists who have painted in the past cannot apply. So Hibak and Danielle will not be your competition <laughs> um, because we kind of consider these murals as being co um, commissioned as part of a mural collection. So Danielle and Hibak have already contributed their work to the collection. Um, we, you know, you could definitely apply with the same uh, application that you applied with last year. If you are planning to do that and you would love feedback, you're welcome to email me. Um, and I can speak to your application last year and um, kind of where we had like a, you know, I can let you know if you were maybe close to being selected and I would encourage you to apply again with that same concept, but I would definitely say um, you may want to refresh it if you weren't chosen last year. Um, and uh, yeah, so please, please reach out to me. My email is on the website. If you have any questions about applying again, I'm, I'm happy to support folks. I would just say, don't email me the day before the application is due. Um, please give some lead time if you're looking for feedback or support on your application. The next question is, what if I already have a piece that I would like to use as a sample? I would make a similar design on my mural. Yeah, uh, please do. I would actually say that this loon piece that Wes um, applied with was it was actually not designed specifically for the fair. It was an idea that he had had. He's always wanted to paint a large loon. Um, and so he actually submitted a mock-up of it from like something else that he was hoping to do. It never came to fruition. And so he proposed it as the for the fair. He did write in his description why he felt like it fit the theme of the park. Um, not to just give us a random sample of something that he hoped to do, but that he thought it was a fit. Um, and that was basically based on the color palette that he was going to use. So yes, I mean, if that helps save you time on coming up with a design sketch and there's something that you're super passionate about, you're welcome to give us a sketch or mock up from some another project or a, a dream project that you've been holding on to. We have folks wondering about the materials being provided, such as a ladder or a tent and any other needs they may need to provide for themselves. Yeah, so all you need to provide is um, paint. 
uh, and your materials to like execute the mural on the surface. Um, and anything else that you need that makes you comfortable, like you want bottles of water, you want to bring in your bottles of water or your snacks. Um, there's so much food at the fair, but sometimes it is actually hard to break away from painting and go stand in line and get food. So two things, you either have an assistant there that can help or go get food, or um, you plan in when you're going to take breaks. But some people like to bring their own food and snacks. We do have a water um, container, so you can refill a bottle of water in the storage. Um, we have storage for all of your supplies. Some of the artists had a little cart that they could use because the, the storage is right near the mural park, but you still have to load up all of the stuff in and out of the storage um, pod. So putting all of your stuff in a rolling cart is helpful. Um, we provide stanchions. Uh, we have buckets for water. We have tarps. We have step ladders, um, extension cords for when you do projection the night before, if that's something you're doing. But it's pretty well equipped. Um, yeah, I think that's anything else, Danielle or Hibak, that you would recommend bringing? Yeah, um, I would, and this is why I think it's important to have done some large scale work before. Um, there's just things that you might not remember, um, like having tape and um, levels, rulers, pencils. Um, and then if you have like a specific type of ladder that you use, like I know I, I never use other people's ladders. I have a, a specific one I like. Um, so just making a list of that stuff ahead of time um, but don't bring so much that it, it takes um, up too much space because there's other artists who need to store things as well. Yeah, and I brought a folding, so I had a, like a folding um, wagon that I put all of my paint in and I had kind of like a setup so I could just wheel it out and it was everything was all set up already and then wheel it back and I had a small folding table for setting things up on so I didn't have to be like constantly grabbing things from the ground. Um, and uh, I brought a more comfortable folding chair. Um, Trisha and Dudley provide some like normal folding chairs, but I knew that when I was sitting painting at the lower half of my mural, I would want something that I could sit in for a while. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and also I brought like multiple different buckets for washing paintbrushes so that the water didn't get too gross. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. All right, the next one is wondering if artists need to plan out their painting time to run the length of the fair. Uh, no, they, you don't have to paint all 12 days. Like we, like we said before, I think it's just, um, there are a number of unpredictable factors like weather, like your own ability to paint every single day, things that might come up in your life, family emergencies, other things that keep you from coming in. So you um, wanna just be available during that time. The contract with, forecast and the state fair is that you will complete your mural in the time of the fair. So you have to complete the mural. That's pretty much the only requirement that we ask of this commission. Um, we don't have a way to set up that you would be able to, like if you don't finish it by the last day of the fair, there's not accommodations to complete the mural later. Um, so that's why it's just a matter of being able to be flexible during that time because, you know, we have no idea what the weather is going to be. I mean, there's been some crazy years <laughs> where, you know, you got to take shelter for tornadoes and things like that. And hopefully it's going to be amazing and beautiful. That's what we always hope for. Um, but again, you just need to be flexible during that time. Um, but most artists, I would say, have been able to stick pretty closely to their schedule. So um, I'd love for Danielle or Hibak to speak to like what you had thought you were going to paint and how many days you thought you were going to come in and how many you actually did. Yeah, I thought it was going to be maybe four days. I work quick. I work a lot quicker now, so maybe it would take me four days now, but I think it took seven. Some days were just rainy. Um, I had to stop painting and I had to sand some of mine because there was water that got under the paint. Um, so there's just a, a lot of factors with the weather that ended up taking me longer. I think it was like seven and a half, maybe even eight days. And that was like typically four hours a day. All right, both. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Bo. Sorry. No, no, um, no. Go ahead. So I thought it would take me six days. So I planned for half of the fair to be painting, and it took me 10. Um, one of the reasons it took me 10 was that I used a different paint brand than I typically do. Um, I usually use bare paint, and I switched paint brands, and it was thinner. So it took me um, 
three or four coats of paint on every single section of my mural, which has lots of little teeny tiny sections um, instead of two. Um, so it took me almost double the amount of time I thought it would. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you, Will. Um, to sum up, uh, lastly, what we've got going here is we've got some more questions about loading in and out kind of the process of getting to the space and wondering if the surface will be primed beforehand or if that is also part of the process. Well, I mean, yeah. it's oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, I was just going to say that, you know, um, just know that if you're selected for this opportunity, there is extensive like orientation and details about how this all works. Like it isn't just like you're selected and then, you know, go off what we told you, but to determine if this is the right opportunity for you, I know it's important to give you as much of a clear picture of like what actually happened. So yeah, Dudley, please speak to the load in part. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think to, to Trisha's point, right? Like it is, a this is physical work and, um, you know, we hope the stipend is generous enough that you can you can get the help you need if some of it feels daunting. Um, we have a, a day before the fair opens, which is madness on the grounds, but that is our load in day where you can drive in and try and park close and unload into the pod, um, project and trace. Danielle was talking about doing that. Uh, and get the lay of the land and try and leave as much stuff there as possible. Um, because the parking, um, you know, it's not always better to have on site parking. Um, there are times when the parking lots are full um, or you, you can't get in because the parade's happening um, and there's no guarantee where you will park. And we've figured out some workarounds about how you can kind of drop stuff off and truck it in and park farther away. But I think in general, the idea is to get everything there that you need so that all you have to do is get yourself there. You know, there's buses and park and ride shuttles that I think are easier, <laughs> um, but you do get the parking. And then it's sort of the same situation on loadout. There's no vehicle traffic on grounds during the fair. Um, so there's a loadout day the day after the fair, which would be the Tuesday after Labor Day, where if you needed to drive in, you could. But otherwise, I think most people finished before then and found a way to break their stuff down into manageable loads and, and load out on their own. Um, there is a sink. Um, there is everything that you need. It's just, just it's not all on the footprint of the green area, but there is a sink and there is disposal and there is water and there is a pod and all of that stuff within, a, let's just say within a block, um, I think is the, the best way um, to, to explain all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I would just add that some, all the artists didn't stay till the end of the fair. And so some were done on day eight, day nine, day 10. And, and some did actually, as Dudley said, load out the parking, um, for the artists is behind the grandstand. So there you have designated parking that you have a pass to. Um, it is still a little bit of a trek from that parking lot to the mural park, but it feels a lot easier than a lot of the other public parking lots. So you do have a designated parking and way in, but you're still, I mean, if you've been to the state fair, you know the crowds and what it might be like to move a wagon <laughs> of, of stuff out through that crowd on Saturday afternoon. Um, it's not the most ideal thing, but you definitely like, let's say you, you know, you can't be there the last two days of the fair and you have to load out your stuff or you can't come back the day after the fair. There's definitely a way to get it all out before. How are we doing on questions? Are there still many or just getting... one last one of uh, sums it up nice is what is the notification timeline for the application process? Um, you know, I don't have that pulled up. It is on the website. I know that if you look at the forecast website where the application is, um, I'm pretty sure the timeline has June 5th as the deadline. And then there's artists notified um, on there. So I don't know if anyone wants to look or I, I just, I can't pull out of here, right? Or maybe I can. Well, what do you think? Is it on there? Dudley? 
I'm it's, looking. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I know that it's. I, I think notification is in June um, because we need July to start prepping. So I don't, I don't remember the day. Here it is. I've got the call up. Okay. Uh, first week of July, artist notified. There you go. The week of July 1st. Yep. Thank you, Hibak. <laughs> orientation. I don't know. I can't pull it up right now. Yeah. So um, there is, yeah, the selection process and then artists will be notified and, um, and then there is an artist orientation. Um, there's a little bit of contracting process. Um, if it helps artists to know you are paid half of the um, stipend before the fair starts so you can buy materials and then you are paid the rest of the stipend when you complete the commission. I just put the timeline in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I am available by email website. My email is there. Please reach out with questions um, if you have any. Um, we're so happy that you all joined us today. And um, I wanna just say thank you so much to Danielle and Hibak for sharing your stories and your experiences and your knowledge this is very helpful. Thank you, Boo, for doing the monitoring and um, Dudley, you're amazing. Thank you. Thanks everyone. We look forward to your applications. Okay. Lots of thank yous echoed back in the chat. We'll have this. <laughs> I think I can time. see the so chat. So much love, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> that was a lot of information. Okay.